Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Wise. Today is October 30th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. We got BC, Washington, Oregon. Check out the ridge of high pressure over the region now, giving some nice, beautiful, sunny skies out there during the afternoon hours. But we got a pattern change. You can see the westerlies on their way here. We got some wet systems as we go through November, and we'll take a look at those in some detail as we go through the video here today. If you take a look, you can actually see some of the low fog developing across some of the southern sound and across some of the interior valleys of Idaho, the Panhandle, through uh, eastern BC and Montana. You know, this high pressure, this Arctic air mass, kind of stagnating things out there. And you can actually see a little bit of that fog across some of the Willamette Valley. But you can also see it reflected here. The high pressure is degrading the air quality now. Weather Service, Missoula, Montana. You can kind of see the circled area there. But we should be kicking that out here as we go through the mid and later portion of the week and start to bring some Pacific air back into the region. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station to record all this weather, click on that link down below to save 10% off. Always more fun to watch the system roll in when you've got a weather station on your house. Taking a look at National Weather Service Spokane, you can see that we're going to be dealing with some chilly lows until we get to midweek here. And then we're going to switch the pattern up. And you can see unsettled weather returns through Thursday through Saturday. Nice graphics as always from the National Weather Service Spokane. Taking a look at Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana here. This is about 200, uh, actually 2,500 feet, 925 millibars on the NAM 3 cam. That's the North American model, high resolution. And you can see the offshore winds still going this morning through the gorge, especially Stampede Gap, still getting some gusty winds out there as well. That continues on through the afternoon and through the evening hours. You can still see the gorge winds going as we go through tomorrow morning. Then they gradually decline here as we start to return some southern here across the region and you can see the next system off the pacific ocean start to make its way in towards the pacific northwest as we go on in through wednesday afternoon shown there now taking a look at 500 millibars 18,000 feet we got bc washington oregon if we put this into motion you can see finally that ridge starts to break down and the next system rolls in here as we go through the end of next week we'll take a look at these details and how much precipitation we're going to get as well and you can clearly see the storm track returning here as we go on in through this upcoming weekend and we've got some warm and wet systems we've got wind potential at well but we are we've not picked up on any one given solution yet now take a look at the ensemble member wise minimum sea level pressure on the european this kind of shows you where some of the biggest and baddest low pressure systems may be the initial system rolls in here through the end of the week you can see you know, fairly deep low here 980 millibars up towards Haida Gwaii clip in the Pacific Northwest, bringing some interesting precipitation totals, and then an even stronger storm. So it looks like it's probably coming at some point next weekend here as well. Still trying to nail down some of these details into the early portion of next week. You can see some interesting lows trying to approach the coastline here. But again, we have not come to any agreement on any one given solution yet. And we're looking at 200 plus hours right now. But you can see we do have the potential for some stronger systems to move in towards the coastline here. And this just continues on through the extended forecast as well. You see these big lows rolling around across the west coast and the pacific northwest now looking at mean sea level pressure on the deterministic run those are the initial conditions we best understand them on the european model put it into motion ridge breaks down here goes our initial system bringing a fairly wet system with that and you can see a 994 millibar low not a bad little storm there on the northern tip of vancouver island that pushes through, and then the next system, an even deeper low, tries to approach Vancouver Island as well, and the potential additional systems. And as this one crosses here, I'm gonna, we're watching. I'm watching this one here for some further development here, because that could cast a better pressure gradient for interior sections if this low starts to trend a little bit stronger. Of course, we'll be the first to know about it here, so just keep checking back daily. Now, looking at the European on six-hour precipitation type, let's see when this precip starts. Will it affect the Halloween activities? Looks like it probably won't. This is about when the trick-or-treaters will be out here on the 31st, the uh, evening hours, and maybe a little bit of light precip around, but not too bad. Definitely not a washout. But then it's a good thing it wasn't a day later because we start to roll that precipitation in here by the time we go towards November 1st. And that would be on Wednesday and Wednesday evening as you see plenty of precipitation associated with that one all the way down through California, BC to California, as you see there. And this was last night's run. only goes out 90 hours, and then we're going to have additional systems after that. Now, looking at the six-hour max wind gust, this is Quileute, Washington, and you can see just this 
a lot of big solutions out here, but really getting a tough time trying to pick out any one given solution here. You can see a little bit of a blustery period here with the initial system as we go through Wednesday night into Thursday, and then the potential for some stronger wins exist after that. And you can see the control run had some wins into the upper 50s here as we went through Saturday night into Sunday morning, but still kind of in that fantasy win hunt storm hunt mode at this point. Tillamook Airport, you can see blustery conditions of that initial system as well. The control head up towards 40 miles per hour, so nothing too too crazy but there are some bigger uh, gusts there and some of the ensemble runs and then another windy period there showing up as a control head wind gusts up towards 50 miles per hour Seattle Tacoma something similar here of course lesser winds the further you go inland here but you can see some bigger gusts starting to show up the control run for example had a Sunday morning gust of 45 miles per hour that'll get your attention as well but you can see just kind of a scattered nature here no good agreement Looking at Seattle Tacoma though on precipitation, this initial system is looking fairly juicy right now. This could downtrend a little bit here, but we'll continue to watch it, of course. The latest control had over 1.3 inches of rainfall in a 24 hour period and pretty good ensemble agreement on that juicy system as we roll on in through the day Thursday. And the temperatures also will be rising. Some of these overnight lows down into the uh, lower 30s for some of the surrounding areas will definitely be warming up as we move on towards the end of the week with the nice warm Pacific Ocean rolling back in over us. Spokane, and again, we're going to be climbing out of those low 20s here and getting back up into normal conditions here as we go through the end of the week. Now, looking at the European Ensemble mean, this is an average of all 50 European Ensemble members. We tweak each one of those 50 members to try to correct for our initial condition errors, and then we can just average out all 50, and it gives us a pretty good idea of what's coming on, coming up for us. And you can see as we go through the day Wednesday, that's when the precipitation is going to be starting here with that initial system. Pretty wet system here across a lot of Oregon, B see Washington and then you can see the additional systems as we start to get towards the weekend a bit here but this is only going out 144 hours this would be Saturday night and you can see all the precipitation between now and Saturday night coming and then and you know additional systems after that which we'll look at now here this is the European on the left versus the GFS the American model on the right versus the European model here on the left we're looking at the deterministic runs yesterday afternoon put it in a motion and you can see we have some pretty good agreement on the timing maybe the gfs a little bit behind the european on the initial timing with that system but you can see pretty wet system on both models and then you can see the european a little quicker with that next one which could have uh, some pretty interesting atmospheric river characteristics with it as well and the gfs also bringing in some heavy precipitation but you can see the european a little bit heavier especially across some of the oregon coastline there but yeah pretty wet period coming up here as we go through early november and that's you know fairly typical for november here as well but we do have wind potential with this as well so this is what we'll be watching here over the next couple days as the storm train definitely returning to the pacific northwest this is like the european i kind of cherry picked right on the oregon coastline there and it actually shows some extreme atmospheric river potential Potential. Still, we've been pretty dry so far this year. So for the most part, this is going to be beneficial, this uh, rainfall, because we've been dealing with some drought conditions here across a lot of the Pacific Northwest. As long as we don't, you know, keep it going or bring it too hot and heavy, we should be okay with these initial systems. Six to 10 day temperature outlook here issued yesterday, clearly above average signal and above average precipitation through November 8th. And again, with the experimental product continuing to show the heavy precipitation potential and the wind potential as well. And, and like I said, we're going to be looking at this daily to try to pinpoint some of that windstorm activity. One of my favorite features here across Pacific Northwest. And we'll try to point things out best we can to try to keep everybody safe if one of those windstorms does happen to roll into the area here. So anyway, yeah, um, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Storm train is going to be returning here, folks. A lot of precipitation incoming. Get your umbrellas out. And these cold mornings, frosty mornings are going to be a distant memory here in the next few days. So anyway, hope you guys are liking the videos. We'll check things out again tomorrow. I can't wait to see what the models bring today. And we'll go over that tomorrow and try to pinpoint some of that windstorm activity. But otherwise, um, I uh, yeah, I hope you guys are having a good day and we will talk again tomorrow.